include them as well. All right, so tonight I wanted to talk to everyone and we're gonna talk to everyone about two things tonight. First, I wanna know if you guys can tell me who is the big saint that we celebrate today? Can someone tell me? Raise your hand if you know who we celebrate today. Yes, Mary, I saw Mary's hand first. St. Anthony? Oh, close, that was yesterday, that was yesterday. Good try, St. Anthony, yes, we know St. Anthony. He is the father of the monastics. He is the one who showed us about true auspices. And he also gave us the example of how when we unite ourselves with Christ, we can receive his sanctification and his love. Okay. So that was St. Anthony. We know so much about St. Anthony. What a great example. Very good. But who do we celebrate today? I see Ellie over here. Go ahead. I'm thinking of um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Oh, yeah, that's part two. Good job. Do Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We talk about today, right? He was someone who was a, ci a civil rights activist and he gave an example. Hopefully he gave it in a non-violent, peaceful manner about how we're supposed to love each other, right? Just like how Christ and all the saints showed us. But we're talking about first about a saint and then we'll talk about Martin Luther King afterwards. The Chocolates family, three out of four have an answer. So let's see. I'll let you guys decide. Saint Athanasios, bravo, Athanasios. Some people have the name Than Athanasios. Some shorten it for Tommy. Other ones use it for uh, for a girl, Sia, uh, Nancy. Many of those that celebrate today. So that's Saint Athanasios. So we're going to talk a little about Saint Athanasios. I'm going to screen share right now, and we're going to read about his life, and we're going to look at his icon, okay? And I want you guys to tell me what you think about Saint Athanasios. If I can find it, why is it not popping up right now? Hold on one sec. Hmm? Let's try that again. Hold on, friends. Hmm. Hmm. Whiteboard desktop. It's not showing it real quick. Okay, I guess Father Chris is having a little technical difficulty right now. Oh, that's why. Hold on one sec, one sec. Oh, sometimes even Father Chris is trying to learn all the... There we go. There we go. Okay. Hi, friends. All right. So we got St. Athanasios here. All right. So first of all, before we start reading about St. Athanasios, can you guys tell me what you see? How does... Uh, can someone tell me uh, what does he look like, first of all? Uh, Miriam? Chocolates, Miriam Chocolates, I see you over there. Go ahead. He looks like he's a, a bishop. Very good, right? He's a, he looks like he's a bishop because he was a bishop. Now, how do we know what a bishop looks like in the Orthodox Church? He First of all, the priest has this, which in Greek is called a petrahili. I wear it. And then underneath is my stichadion. That's my robe. And that's the same robe that we wear as for when we are first baptized, okay? But then afterwards, you then see him here have called an epigonation, which only elevated priests and bishops can wear. And then around him was a big cloak. And that cloak is called a felonion because it's a clothing that falls on top of him. And then he wears the last thing, which shows that he is a bishop and that is his omophorion. His omophorion, you see it wrapped around with the crosses and it's over him. Our bishops wear the same thing as well, too, to signify that they are bishops and that they are shepherds. That's what a bishop is. A bishop is a shepherd of the flock of Christ. And so in turn, just as St. Athanasius and all the other ones do, they try to follow in our Lord's footsteps by being good shepherds. Okay, we got that. Excellent. So we see that. What else do you guys see about St. Athanasius? And what does he have in his hand? Ellie, you want to answer that? Uh, Jack, I'll get you on the next one. What's in, what's in his hand? What does that look like to you? Take a guess. What do you think it looks like? Paper? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jack, what were you going to say? Maybe like some kind of script? Or like yeah, a scroll, right? Very good. So remember, when St. Athanasius was born, he was born near around the year 300. So if we're in 2021, 300 was 
18, yeah, 1800, no, not 18, 1700 years ago, okay? And 1700 years ago, they didn't have computers, they didn't have iPhones, they didn't have everything that we have. So they wrote everything on a piece of paper on script, right? And so St. Athanasius, as he was a bishop, he was also someone that was very educated and who loved Ristuli very much, okay? So we're going to read a little about St. Athanasius' life, and then we're going to talk about him, and then we're going to talk about Martin Luther King Day and how we need to be good Orthodox Christians to everyone around us, okay? So I'm going to start with Jack, okay? Jack, as best as you can, I would like for you to do some of the reading for this first paragraph, okay? Can you see it? There you go. If you have any trouble, let me know, and I'll help you guys come along, okay? We're all watching together. Go ahead, Jack. St. Athanasius, the great Archbishop of Alexandria, was Bravo. a great father of the church and a pillar of orthodoxy. Very good. Around the year 297 in the city of Alexandria into a family of Pios. Pious, pi no, that's a tough one. Pious Christians. Pious Can Christians. Very good. Okay, pause there. Hold on. Does anyone know what pious means? That's a big word. Pious means to be humble, right? They were humble Christians. And does anyone know where, where Alexandria is? Egypt. Egypt. Very good. Okay. And then from there, we see that he received a fine secular education but he acquired more knowledge by different study of the Holy Scripture. Can anyone tell me what's the Holy Scripture? Let's go to Mary. Mary, what's the Holy Scripture? The Bible. Very good. And then in his childhood, the future hierarch, Athanasius, became known to St. Alexander, the Patriarch of Alexandria. Oh, okay. A group of children, which included Athanasius, were playing at the seashore. The Christian children decide to baptize their play, pagan playmates. Wow. I don't know if we could do that nowadays, but wow. They, they baptize their own pagan friends. That's pretty wild. Then it says the young Athanasios, whom the children designate as a bishop, perform the baptism, precisely repeating the words he heard in church during the sacrament. Wow. Patriarch Alexander observed all this from a window. Have any of you guys at your own homes ever played like a bishop or a priest? Did you ever go walk around and shake your censer or give communion? Yes, no, maybe? Maybe, yes? Okay, very cool. And so just like that, St. Athanasius did the same thing when he was a young kid. Because his family, being pious Christians, they would go to church and they would pray all the time. Here it then says, he then commanded that the children and their parents be brought to him. He conversed with them for a long while and determined that the baptism performed by the children was done according to the church order. Wow. He acknowledged the baptism as real and sealed it with the sacrament of chrismation. From this moment, the patriarch looked after the spiritual upbringing of Athanasius and in time brought him into the clergy, first as a reader, and then he ordained him as a deacon. Wow. Isn't that pretty cool? Now we're going to read more about St. Athanasius. Okay, uh, how about we go to the Chocolates family? Um, Zacharia, why don't you read this paragraph for me? After, After the, the death of the Holy Patriarch Alexander, St. Athanasius was ordained and chosen as his successor of, in the seat of Alexandria. He refused a count to himself unworthy, but the insist of all the Orthodox population that was in agreement. He was consecrated a bishop when he was 28 and installed as the Archbishop of Al the Alexandrian Church. St. Athanasius guided the church for 47 years, and during this time, he endured persecution and grief from his... And Antagonist. That's a tough word. Okay, pause. Good job. Good job, Zakaria. Uh, can someone tell me what persecution means? That's a big word. What if I want to persecute you? What do you think that means I'm doing to you? Can someone tell me? The chocolates? I see you guys got some hands up. Someone answer. Go ahead. Basically kill you? Yeah, kill you. Yeah. Kill you. Yeah. It doesn't mean always kill you. Can you be persecuted yeah. without dying? Yes. Someone persecuting you means that they are putting you to a test 
and they are blaming you for whatever they is. So in other words, when I'm persecuting someone, I want to make sure that they are humiliated, they are saddened, and that they are either arrested or put away for whatever they're expressing. So that's what persecution means. Then we then see that because then look at this. He was expelled from Alexandria several times. Wow. And hid himself from the Arians in desolate places since they repeatedly tried to kill him. St. Athanasius spent more than 20 years in exile. That means far away. Returned to his flock and then was banished again. Oh, the poor man. Imagine that. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. There was time when he remained as the only Orthodox bishop in the area. A moment when all the other bishops had fallen to heresy. Heresy is incorrect teachings, okay? So you have correct teachings and incorrect teachings. Then they see numerous miracles that were conquered. And then when St. Athanasius was under Julian the Apostate, his wrath fell upon St. Athanasius, whom we consider a great pillar of orthodoxy. Julian intended to kill the saint in order to strike Christianity a grievous blow, but soon he perished himself. Wow. Mortally wounded by an arrow during a battle, he cried out with despair, you have conquered, O Galilean. Wow. After Julian's death, St. Athanasius guided the Alexandrian church for seven years and died in 373 at the age of 776. Numerous works of the saint have been preserved, his orations, which means his writings, an epistle, and then also on the human nature of Christoli, epistles to other people about the Holy Spirit and the equality with Father and Son, as well as his offerings against the heresies of the false teachings. St. Athanasius we celebrate with St. Cyril, okay? But what a great blessing because St. Athanasius was someone very pious, someone very humble and very loving. So you guys all have teachers, right? And your mommy and daddy try to teach you about the good things in life. What, what do you guys think is so important that you guys learn from a teacher? What makes a good teacher? I want to hear from everyone. Jack and your sister, not Gia. Is it Gia? Not Gia. Yeah, it's Gia. Yeah, hi, Gia. What's, um, give, me, give me a good example of what a, a good teacher is. What makes a good teacher? Someone who is nice. Someone who's nice. Very good, right? What else does a teacher do that's so good? Teach somebody. Yeah. All right, teach. I'm thinking of another word. It starts with a G. If I want to help someone and I want to take them somewhere, what do I do? Grab? No. <laughs> yeah, you can grab them and take them, but no, I want to take them somewhere. Ellie, how about Ellie? Um, Starts with a G. You want to you want to you want someone to go somewhere? How do you show them there? You you can. Yeah. Starts with a G. Guide. Bravo! Very good. You guide them, right? That's what a teacher does. And then what else does a teacher do? A teacher teaches, a teacher loves. What else? Um, how about Mary? Mary, we'll hear from you. They're understanding and fair. Oh, very good. They're understanding and fair. Beautiful. Are teachers patient or do they get frustrated very easily? How about the Chocolates family? Patient, patient. Very patient. good. Patient, right? 100%. What else do we know about teachers? I want to hear one last thing about the teachers before we continue. Mary? They're spending a lot of their time on us and like do, maybe like letting us like redo a test or like by help maybe help us during our recess on how to like do something we don't understand. Very good. So I think, I think kind of what I'm getting is a teacher, someone who helps a teacher, someone who educates a teacher, someone who loves a teacher has patience and a teacher kind of helps us and guides us so that we can learn and grow to be better human beings. So the funny thing is, is not all the saints of the church teachers Yes. And who was the first and greatest teacher? Who was the greatest teacher of love? Who was the greatest teacher of patience? The greatest teacher of compassion and the greatest teacher of wisdom? Um, Mary just talked. How about Ellie? 
Saint Nicholas. Um, Saint Nicholas had to learn from someone. I know who it is, but I don't remember their name. Okay, Jack. What about you? Jesus. Hi. Bravo! Right, Jesus. Christoli was the great teacher. He is the great teacher because he shows us how to be good people. And he tells us to follow him, right? And then to allow this light that's in us to shine forth to everyone. So that's why we celebrate St. Athanasius today on January 18th with St. Cyril. Both of them were patriarchs. Does anyone know what a patriarch is? It's a big word. Patriarch. What's a patriarch? If you know the answer, raise your hand. If not, I'll, I'll help answer. No? Okay, it's a, it's a big word. So Father Chris is a priest. Me, I'm a priest. Beneath me, first order in the priesthood is a deacon. The next person after a priest is who? Does anyone know? Who comes after a priest? I see a chocolate hand. Oh, um, okay, go ahead. Zachariah, I saw your hand. Your brother, too. Um, uh, bishop? Bravo, bishop. So there's different types of bishops. You have a bishop, you have a metropolitan, you have an archbishop, and then you have a patriarch. A patriarch is a patriarchy, which literally means a father figure that guides all the people. We have many patriarchs. We are under the patriarch Bartholomew, which is the ecumenical patriarch of Constantinople. There's a patriarch in Alexandria, just like St. Athanasius was. There's a patriarch in Jerusalem, which is the Holy Lands, a patriarch in Russia, a patriarch in Serbia, patriarch in Antioch, a patriarch in Romania, patriarch in Bulgaria, patriarch in, I don't know, I think that might be all of them, but there's a lot of patriarchs and they all help and guide their people because who did they learn about how it is to be a good shepherd from who? Mary? God or Jesus? Yes, Jesus, right? Christuli, God, correct. That's a correct answer. Because he showed us when he was on earth and through his prayers and through his wisdom of the holy scriptures that for us to be good shepherds, we have to lead the flock by being with the flock, right? Christuli came to earth to save us. And then he allowed us through his salvation to become one with God. St. Athanasius said that. St. Athanasius said that the greatest gift was when God became man so that man could become one with God. And that's very powerful because throughout history, there was no unification. There was no togetherness. We were separated. And does anyone know what separates us from God? It's a three-letter word. Go ahead. I see the chocolate hands. Sin. Sin, bravo. Sin is a wedge. Everyone know what a wedge is? It comes in between us and goes, plop, plop, separates us. But when we have Christuli in our lives, we then are able to diminish sin and then in turn be united with Christuli. That's why it's so important for us to pray, to continue to supplicate, and then in turn always give thanks to Christuli. That's why we celebrate St. Athanasius so beautifully today. Great job, guys. That was a really good, that was a really good uh, chat right there about St. Athanasius. So next, we're going to go to remembering Martin Luther King, okay? So Martin Luther King, all right, we see him right here. He was a civil rights activist in the 50s and 60s before his assassin assassination. Now, who do you see next to him? Does anyone know who this is? Zachariah, I see your hand up. I don't know that he's like a patriarch, but I don't know. I know. He is. So remember, we're talking about bishops. He's a bishop because he's wearing his pano kalimafo. That's that veil on top of his kalimafi. And this around a bishop's neck is called an engolpion. That engolpion they wear, it's a metal that signifies that they are a bishop, okay? And look at him. He was the Archbishop of North and South America. And he walked with Martin Luther King in Selma, Alabama, okay? Now, think about this, Pedia. Christuli told us to love one another 
and to minister to one another. But for so many years and for so many centuries, there was always separation in the world. Can you guys tell me why you think there's so much pain and separation in the world between color, between race, between orientation, and between people? Why do you think there's so much separation? What's missing? Can someone tell me? Mary? No one, there isn't anyone who hasn't performed any sins except for like God and Jesus. Right. So then what, so why do you feel then there's a, why do you feel then we're all, we then separate, we're all separated with each other? What's missing? If, if, if Christuli, if Christuli was the perfect example, why are all of us still not loving each other? He told us to love. He told us to forgive. He told us to serve and help each other. But what happens? We see people have something in their lives that is more important than there's something that is missing. Can someone tell me what that is? What is more, what's the most important thing in many people's lives? Yes, Ellie. What do you think is most important in people's lives? God and Jesus. Well, actually, so that's funny. You're close. It's the opposite. So everyone, we are missing God and Jesus. And what we have instead is that we have pride, we have ego, we have greed, and we have power to be more important than Christuli. And that's sad because those are not good things to have, nor... That is what God told us to not have. He told us to do the opposite, to be humble, to be respectful, to be compassionate, to be loving, and to be merciful. So think about this, Pedia. In 19, I think this was 1962. 65. Yeah, 65. Okay. 1965. Archbishop Yakovos of North South America went to Selma to walk with Martin Luther King for a peaceful, nonviolent protest of injustice. Now, when it's done in a peaceful, nonviolent state, that means it is done in the sense that we have it with Christuli. But when violence and ego and pride get involved, Christuli is not there because Christuli doesn't want us to hurt each other. Christuli doesn't want us to, to put pain with each other or to be mean with each other or to hate each other. He wants us to be united with each other and to love each other as his creation. Now, in 1965, you were not encouraged to be with Black people. And then being him, a big, prominent bishop of the Orthodox Church, the Greek Orthodox Church, where many people might have been racist or had hatred or pain or suffering, Archbishop Yakovos and many other Orthodox Christians and Christians walked with Martin Luther King to express their objection to racism and to walk in defiance of the injustice that was happening. Because he knew that as we are followers of Christ, we are called to justice. We are called to forgive. We are called to unify and we are called to love our neighbors. So guys, my question to you is, do any of you have any neighbors or friends who are different colors, different faiths, uh, different cultures, or different ethnicity? Raise your hand if you do, if you have any neighbors that are. Do you have any different neighbors? Mary, do you have any different neighbors? I don't have a next door neighbor. That's... Any neighbors, any neighbors, even if they're across the street or whatever. Yeah, okay. Ellie, do you have any neighbors that are different than you? That maybe they have different, they're different colored or they're different in what faith they're in? Do you have any different ones, Ellie? Yes, no? Oh, oh yes, yes. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, we should, because I know I have neighbors, not only where I live, but everyone. Every, because remember the lawyer in the Good Samaritan asked Christuli, so who's my neighbor? Everyone is your neighbor. <gasps> hey, 
Do you guys ever watch Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood? I still do. I watch with my sons. But in Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, we hear about Daniel Tiger and all the different people in his neighborhood, right? You got his friend, the cats. You've got um, the mailman, Speedy Delivery. What's his name? I don't know. I need my sons here. Uh, you got Baker Aker. Uh, who else? You've got King Wednesday. And who else, Luke? Queen? What's the queen's name in, in Daniel Tiger? Oh, okay. He doesn't know either. Well, that doesn't help. Anyways, we all have different neighbors, right? So all the different neighbors show us how we are supposed to be nice and to love each other. Because even though we're different, even though we might be different colored, we might be in a different faith or a different culture or a different society, Christuli has told us that we are supposed to love everyone. And now if love and faith, compassion, mercy, and understanding existed from all of us, would there be racism? I want to hear from you guys. Jack and Gia, do you think there'd be racism? I honestly don't know. Mm, that's a good question. Gia, what do you think? One hand. Uh, mostly... If love, if love, if faith, compassion, mercy, and all those good things that come from Christuli, as he taught us, if they existed, would there be racism? Would there be hatred? No. No, right? What about uh, the Chocolates family? What do you guys think? No. No, right? Okay, Mary, what do you think? No. No, very good. And Ellie's listening as well, too. She did a good job. You guys are right. Because... Because if we have Christuli in our hearts, then we express Christuli to the whole world. And when we need to express Christuli into the whole world, we need to be that example. So I want all of you to take the example, just like Archbishop Yaakovos of blessed memory, just like St. Athanasios and all the saints who went out into the world and served all the people of God. They loved, they taught. They were humble, they were forgiving, and they were respectful of all people because they knew, as Christuli said, that we're supposed to love our neighbor and to know that the great rule, does anyone know what the golden rule is? Did your mommy and Baba teach you the golden rule? Yes, Mary. Teach other how you want to be treated. Right, isn't it? Or do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Wow. How powerful is that? But it's true, Padia. If we don't have, if we don't do that, and we don't love everyone, are we doing what Christuli wants us to do? No. If everyone is happy and we're all helping each other, and see when someone's hungry and we feed them, and when someone's thirsty we give them something to drink, or when someone doesn't have any clothes do we give them clothes? Or how about the harder ones? When someone's being mean to someone at school or bullying, or teasing, and I don't help them, am I being like Christuli? No. So I think we know the answers. So the hardest part then for tonight, Pedia, is that we need to start following in the footsteps of Christuli. I want you guys tonight, as we celebrated St. Athanasios tonight, yesterday we celebrated Oaios Antonio, St. Anthony the Great, and as we celebrate all the big saints in our church, and naturally, all the other people as well, too, in our world, such as, naturally, Martin Luther King and other ones who fought for peace and for understanding that if you guys want peace, you guys want love, you want mercy, and you want compassion, it has to start with who? Can someone tell me? Who's it going to start with? Mary? God or Jesus? Uh, we already got him. Next, I need a different answer. Who's it start with? It's kind of a trick. It's a trick answer. Don't overthink. If you want the if you want the world to be a better place, who's going to start it? Uh, uh, Ellie. Who's to start with Ellie? You want the world to be a better place? Who has to start it? Us. Yes, good job. It has to start with you 
with Father Chris, with mommy, daddy, brothers and sisters and everyone. You have to start to make the world a better place through your faith and through your actions, okay? Go out into the world. I want you to be nice to any person you meet. I want you to be loving to every person to you meet. And naturally, do not be afraid to be an Orthodox Christian. Do your cross, go to church, have faith, give thanks to Christuli, and know that when you guys have God with you, nothing is impossible, okay? I want you guys to do that going forward, to be the great example, and I want you guys to bring the peace into the world. Start it with you, start it with your family, and then everyone around you, okay? Sounds good, everyone? Yes. Okie okay. dokie. Does anyone have any questions for Father Chris tonight? I don't have any. No. No? I don't know the Chocolates family. Someone have a question there? No? Okie dokie. Okay. All right, friends. Kalinita. God bless you guys. I hope you all stay healthy and well, okay? Have a good night. 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 Thank you.